The wilds ain't so scary now, are they? The dynasty to the families of the city, all reunited. A pinch of fairy dust, and it's all sin. And that's everything. Mother knows he's paid his dues in that forge. I can't hear him at all anymore. He's too far away. But he'll be all right. Just needs to get that shard from Zolf and come on home. The calamity hit the Tazel terminals hardest of all. You know why Zolf went back there. The place was his home. All his old friends and family were there. Taken by the calamity. Zolf must be there all alone. Just waiting. You know what's funny? Zolf's waiting. There's not much left to do here in the Bastion, I'm afraid. So why not tell each other stories to pass the time, right? Zia, there's another reason I've been telling you all this. There's something I want you to understand. When a kid brings back that shard, the bastion will be complete. What happens to Zol? Ceylandia will be whole again. Everything will be back to normal. Everyone will be all right. Problem is, we'll all be gone. Oh, we're not gonna die. It's more like all of this will just stop. Things will go back to the way they used to be. That's the power of the Bastion. This whole place is a living record of the times before the Calamity. The way things were before this story. Good times, right? You'd be your old self again. Think of all those times I didn't go your way.
you could have another go at him. No mistakes. Everything you've ever done, you could do it over. And wouldn't that be grand? Wouldn't you agree? Well... I guess there's nothing more to say. something else. A confession. How come I know so much about the Bastion? that sets things back to a bygone time. You can't test it. So you're probably wondering if the calamity happened already. What's to stop it from happening again, after the Bastion does its thing? The answer is... I don't know. some other way out of this mess. It's all right, I can tell. But why would you even want another way? Unless, unless you wanted to stay here with us. Well, that's sweet and all, but I don't know if I can stick around. It's on our shoulders. We can't just let it go. Bastion does have another function, strictly speaking. If ever the monument blew out, and we couldn't repair it, still evacuate. First, we'd round up as many folks as we could carry. Next, we'd detonate the cores, and we'd take off away from here. Heavy, ain't it?
You know, Zolf and his countrymen won't be giving up that shard without a fight, don't you? Every shred of decency, though, has he? He tried to warn you about his plans. He tried to warn the kid. This ain't a personal matter. Zolf all the way home. I can see it now. The kid in one corner, and Zolf in the other. Ain't much of a fight. Don't you worry, though. Once the Bastion's restored, it'll all be alright. Although, after talking it over like this, guess I'm beginning to have my doubts. probably dealt with Zolf by now. He reminds me of myself when I was his age. 
I ever tell you about those days? Hey, kid. Get up, kid. Come on, that ain't funny. I say get up. That's more like it. Now, set that shard into the monument there. Then we'll talk. Can't believe you brought him back again. Bet you had to do more than say please this time. The Bastion. It's finally finished. Now, there's something I want you to see. Welcome to the heart of the Bastion. I ain't one for long goodbyes, so here's the deal. Zia and I figure you done the heavy lifting, so you get to do the honors. We can tell you how to work this thing if you got any questions. Good to see you. You can undo the calamity here and now. Go on, kid. And before I forget, thank you. Always wondered what the motherland was like. Not that it matters anymore. Zolf only brought more ruin to the Ura. No wonder they didn't take kindly to him. You've got one thing left to do, so you hang on to that badge. Besides, you earned it. Don't let anything you've done get to you. You can save all those creatures here and now. We made it. So, let's see. You can either prevent the calamity, or stick around with me and Rex. I'd hate to be in your shoes. If I could be any place I wanted, I'd stay right here. We could go anywhere in the world. Zolf tried to talk me into joining him. I tried to talk him out of it. I guess we both failed. When I finally found my people, I told them we could help. They just took me for a traitor. Glad you showed up. Any moment I'd want to live again happened after the Calamity, not before. Figured you'd had enough of me by now. You could have undone the calamity itself, but instead you want to stay in a world like this. I gotta admit, kid, I ain't yet put much thought in that idea. But carrying on with you here, we can't go back no more. I suppose we could go wherever we please. And if anyone's left out there, 
I sure would like to see the look in their faces when we dock this thing right on that doorstep. Getting ahead of myself, though. I'm gonna need a first mate. What do you say? is really about the Ceylonians and the Ura. The Ceylonians came here from the motherland eons ago. They moved in, made nice with the Ura, then made mean with the Ura, and then developed a super weapon to try to holocaust every Ura. But in the process of doing so, hired an Ura onto the team to get the, you know, Ura genocide machine running. That's what the calamity is. And so he said it to backfire, and it worked. And the aura are fine. As you can see, there's literally hundreds of them in their tunnels, and we only see the warriors. If we assume that the aura are as militarized as the United States, only 10% of them are currently in the military. Now, I don't know that people that still use spears have an organized military as such, but the Romans did. And the aura have guns. So... It's entirely possible that, yes, there's way more aura that we don't even see that are cooks and mothers and stay-at-home dads and librarians and other things that keep society running. Um, 
But yes, this story is really, like, truly one about prejudice. Zoth learns that Ceylandi has been planning to genocide his whole race since before he was a baby. And he tries to get revenge on the last living Ceylandians and the things that they built. Because he can't really get revenge on the people who attempted to genocide his people. Because they genocided themselves by mistake. And so he goes to the Aura themselves, and the Auras say, sure, I guess. The Aura don't attack the Bastion. They don't do it until very, very late in this world. And the only reason that they really do it is because they'll ask them to. What ends up happening is that, you know, the Aura were, would have been happy to just let it be, to leave it. Um, if not for Zulf, then most of this plot wouldn't have happened. But Zulf lets his prejudice blind him to the real tragedy of the end of the world and the ability to move forward from it. Rux assumes that the kid is going to ice Zulf the second season. But he's wrong, because Rux did actually fight the Aura. He was in the army. Several of his lines make reference to the fact that he's a veteran and that he did fight the Aura many times. Um, but the kid is not a product of his people or a product of his time. He doesn't care. Zulf is his friend first and the guy who betrayed him second, and the fact that he's an Aura and he's a Ceylonian don't really come into play. So... I think that the true canon is that the kid should bring back Zolf. Because Zolf doesn't really have a place anywhere else. Because of Zolf's attempt to kill the remaining Ceylonians and awakening the kid onto the remaining Ura. I mean, God, it's like the demon who killed Doomguy's pet bunny, which is a real thing. Look it up. Like, one demon killed Doomguy's pet bunny, and we're in six or seven games of demon genocide later, and Doomguy's wrench has not begun uh, wrath, rather. I try to go for rage and wrath at the same time. Doomguy's wrath has not begun to subside. So, the kid forgives Zulf, in my ending at least. He forgives Zulf, despite everything. And then, he blows the cores and moves the ship out, gets the Bastion back to the motherland. In a way, it's kind of returning nature to its natural state, but I think it's the only choice that actually matters. Because... Because the few lines that we've heard where Rux says that he feels like he remembers this or that he's saying this again or that he said this a thousand times, those are all lines that occur in New Game Plus. And in New Game Plus, the only difference is those lines and the fact that the kid has all of his weapons. So... Rux's line about how even if they do reset the whole world, there is no guarantee that the Ceylondians won't be racist to the Aura again, that the Calamity won't be constructed, and that all of this won't happen. There isn't a guarantee. It might just happen again because. And I think that because of that, Bastin could happen as many times as you like, except for if you pick the leave ending. There are probably an infinite amount of times that Bastin could occur. And maybe it already has, and we just don't know. But the only real choice is forgiveness. The Aura are willing to let the remaining Ceylondians get out of Dodge. The Kid is willing to bring Zolf back into the fold. And the Bastion leaves. 
it's very beautiful and so well constructed and like I mentioned earlier that there's a good idea in screenwriting that a very small amount of what you actually write should end up on screen so much of the war between the Ura and the Ceylondians, the imperialism of the Ceylondians towards the Ura, like land stealing, a lot of problems. And if that, and that all sucks. But if the remaining Ceylondians leave, who knows? Maybe things will go back to normal. As evidenced by the wilds, most of the wildlife are pretty fine. And the Tesla Terminal as well, they're also pretty much fine. Ceylandia only just bombed themselves. And really, if you're going to genocide somebody, it may as well be your own people. It shows you really mean it. Granted, it happened for, you know, accidental reasons. about like the imperialism, the colonization, the prejudice, and the inherent nature of forgiveness is such a strong part. Rux tells the kid to forget all of the violence that he commits, like all the animals and aura that he murders, because it doesn't matter because Rux is already planning on resetting the world. One could go the extra mile and take it as a statement about video game violence, because in a sense you can reset the world in story, but also because it's a video game. It doesn't have to matter to you. But the kid is able to say, no, I'm gonna take those things with me. Sorry. I'm having a bit of silence because um, I'm going back, on f back and forth on whether or not I should overshare right here. Uh, because I'm queer, and uh, we have fun by oversharing. I'll do it. Um, I ran away from home at some point, and I feel like Bastion may or may not have been involved in the decision to do so. Because I was in a rather abusive environment. And something about Bastion clicked. The fact that even if you go and make up this day, there's never a guarantee it won't all disintegrate the next day. And that was the case. No matter how the day ended, if it ended bad or if it ended good, it could all just go back to being shit the next day. So repairing something that is not broken but flawed is impossible. You can fix something that is broken, but something that was made flawed to begin with cannot be fixed. Its nature is perfect at being terrible. Its job is not to be good, and it doesn't work. That's why you can't fix something flawed. Only something broken. And somewhere in my uh, multi like multiple playthroughs of Bastion, I internalized, wow, yeah. Sometimes the only good thing to do is to burn the fucker down and beat a path out, you know? You can make the same choice hundreds of times in a row, but if you make the same choice twice, isn't there something inherently wrong about it? If you make a choice that's like, I'm going to fix my life, in this very specific way. Or I'm going to fix my relationship with this person in this incredibly specific fashion. And the ability to make that choice a second time falls into your lap. Why didn't it get fixed the first time? And maybe the problem is you. But after the first many, many times, you will realize the problem is not you. And you will go at this problem in every way that you can, but it comes back to the fact that you're doing the same thing over and over again. And the answer is to do something else.
make the only choice that matters. You know? The choice that you have to make hundreds of times over and over again so you can keep living the same life is, in my opinion, inferior to the choice you make once. And just so I air this out, suicide is not really a choice you make once. It is not really a choice in and of itself. It is the cessation and removal and denial of any choice past the incident itself. Uh, so what I'm saying is, don't kill yourself, but definitely run away from home. That's what I did, uh, and it worked out pretty well for me. But yeah, that's why Bastion really stuck with me. Because, like, yes, it's a fun game. Yes, it is fucking beautiful. Look at this. I'm just sitting at the title screen here, and it's so pretty to look at. Like, the watercolors, the, the world, it's like... Ceylandia is all blue, the wilds are browns and oranges and greens, the tassel terminals are all like white and bright blues, and the kid has this design that is able to stick out in all of them. The way that all the enemies fit into their world, the way that the edge of Ceylandia becomes the wilds, and the very edge of the wild starts to get colder and colder until you hit the tassel terminals. Those are all very cool parts of this game, but on a subconscious level, it clicked for me in a way of making one choice that matters as opposed to hundreds of choices that don't. But yeah, that's why I really wanted to do this playthrough fast. Part of why it was so hard to do a playthrough fast, because what can I say about this? Obviously, I've said it, but I'm doing so in an almost podcast-like fashion at the title screen and the credits after the game has ended. Bastion is a game that very much speaks for itself, as I mentioned, but so much isn't said, like I've also mentioned. And so, really, this is where a lot of the good moments happen with Bastion. Not when you're playing it, but when you're thinking about it, and you're like, damn. But yes, um... I was also a very emotionally stunted teenager because uh, I was born a man and I live in the United States of America, so emotion is one of those things that gets beaten out of you, um, or is supposed to. It didn't work on me, but only after a lot of work. Uh, so the thing that I'm getting at here is that something that would make me as a teenager cry uh, is very rare, and I actually kept a list of the times that I cried because the feelings I felt, turns out, that was called being sad, baby Alfred. The feelings I felt were so alien that I wanted to write them down. Um, for reference, it's when Sniper Wolf dies in Metal Gear Solid 1. It's at the very end of Metal Gear Solid 3, and anyone who's played it will know why, and I will do a playthrough of it, and I probably will cry again. Um, and it's, it's at the end of Arkham City, not to spoil a 10-year-old game, but I won't. Uh, and it's this, I think. Oh, also during Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood at some point. Eventually I stopped keeping the list because I kept crying more, and I was like, oh, I just have normal human emotions. But yes, the, the vibe, the scene, the level of just picking up this traitor, this guy who has been a thorn in your side, this, like, villain, this super villain. And like, man, you got a raw deal though. Let's get you home, bud. And like, you suffer for it. Everyone starts shooting you because it's like, oh my God, it's the Aura Slayer and the traitor. Let's get him. He's weak, you know, he's distracted. He's carrying that guy home. And then like, one guy stops shooting because he realizes that like, hey, he's not even fighting us. And then more people stop shooting. And it's like, you know, we kind of did start this fight in particular. He wouldn't have come after us if not for Zolf. And like, they're like, he is taking, I mean, our biggest problem recently has been Zolf, and he's taking it out of here. Why not just let our two problems, you know, hold each other and get the hell out of the Tazzle Terminals? 
and then one guy lets his prejudice get the better of him and starts shooting again after everyone else has stopped. And then his commander ices him, just whacks him in the back with one of those, like, sword spears that they have. It's just... It just sends me over the edge every time. The baby teams, you know? And, like... The song that's playing, Mother, I'm Here. Um, the two really well-done vocal songs in this game are Build That Wall and Mother, I'm Here. One is sung by Zia and one by Zolf. Both are sung by the Aura companions in this game. M Mother, I'm Here appears to be a Ceylonian song, though. Uh, because it's about... I, th I think it's about, like, leaving the motherland, coming to Ceylandia, yada yada. And... It calls reference to mother, and I don't think that's the literal, like, your biological mother. I think that is more of a religious figure. Because Zulf, when exasperated, surprised, or worried, will say, oh, mother. Not Zulf. Rux will say that sometimes. Um, whereas Build That Wall is very, very much a aura song. And it's about, in fact, about the aura fighting the Ceylondians. I'll dig my hole, you build that wall. The aura, who live in the Tassel Terminals, are taunting the Ceylondians who built the rippling walls. One day that wall is going to fall, you know? And it did. And, like, it's such a sad and, like, mournful but cool and poppy song that is explicitly a military taunt. It contains the phrase, we'll be here before too long. Like, watch your ass, we're gonna get ya. Um, and the last song in the game is a duet between the two of them. And that's called Sending Sail Coming Home. Beautiful. And uh, again, that's Darren Korb as the voice of Zolf. And specifically the one singing that song. So if you ever wanted to know what Zagreus sounds like when singing, ring-a-ding-ding, your wish is granted. There's a lot more that I could say about this game. In that one level where the beasts of the wilds have built their own little bastion and Ruck spends the whole time trying to convince you, the kid, but really trying to convince himself that it's okay we're killing them because we're just gonna reset the world anyway. And is he really just like, he's a veteran. We know this. And he fought and killed a lot of Aura. And he planned to kill more. He may or may not have been involved on the Calamity. And, like, he is not convincing the kid that what they're doing is okay. The kid doesn't care. The kid is like a gun. Just point him and he'll start making trouble for people. But Rux is not handling it well. And it's fascinating. Um, and then as for... Sorry, I got onto a tangent about how there's a lot more that I can say, but I should end the video. One last thing. We know a little of Zulf's backstory. He had a wife, and she died. We learned that in who knows where. The kid's mother died, and he went to go join the army, basically as soon as you possibly could. And then made history by being the first person to sign up for a second tour. Uh, because nobody likes that. Um, Zia actually fell in love with this boy. The boy in question, actually, was only interested in her father. Uh, not in, like, a sexual way, because that would be very soap opera, but, like, no, if you recall, Zia's father was one of the scientists who worked on the Bastion and the Calamity. Uh, Van, I believe his name. So, you know pretty heartbreaking and traumatic. That's why she says all of the good moments of her life happened after the calamity. Which is rather cynical and yet, damn, not wrong. Um. And then one last thing. I only figured it out on this playthrough because of one tooltip. So the, the walls originally were the only things that rippled like this. Um, prior to the Calamity, the world was like regular Earth. 
And the reason that the ground forms up under your feet is because of the calamity and because of the power of the little cog thing that's on the kid's back. I try to point it out, but you can see it moving with the little cog thing he's holding. Normally it goes on his back. Um, and the Tesla terminals have actually been blown out of their place in the Earth and are going into the stars. So, who even knows where they're going? But yeah, um... That's Bastion, everyone. I, I do these LPs in an attempt to, like, have this one perfect, wonderful, crystallized version of the game in my mind. Possibly with the intent of never playing the game again. I don't think that's the case for all of them. And I really don't think it's the case for this one. But for the 10-year anniversary of this game, I really did want to just, like, set it down in stone. Hammer it into shape and say, this is Bastion for me. It was important when it came out, because I thought it looked cool, and it has a cool art style. It was important the first time I played it, because of the really good, like, graphics and fighting. It was important the first time I beat it, because of how deeply the ending shook me. And it only got better as I thought about it more and more. And yeah, that's ten playthroughs of Bastion. Uh, two on this PC and eight on my Xbox. That's nice. Wow. Also, this LP was a lot shorter than I thought it would be. A first playthrough of Bastion would be a lot longer than this. Uh, I ended up blazing through this in a third of the time that I expected. And by that I mean a third of the episodes that I thought that it would take. So, I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the time, but I'll figure it out. But until then, I'm Alfred. That's short for El Friedrich. I'm a sad, queer, bisexual demi boy. I enjoy Let's Playing and being philosophical about video games. Please, watch another one of my LPs. Um, I get very philosophical and moral, and if you like this little breakdown I've had at the end of the episode, by breakdown, I do mean an emotional breakdown. Um, Besides the emotional part, I do have a serious breakdown in almost every Morrowind episode as I talk about the lore of the Elder Scrolls. Um, I did the same thing to Far Cry 3. I've been playing through every Halo game. Uh, in fact, I should be on ODST coming up pretty soon in the schedule. Um, every October I play scary games, and then I have weekly show that covers roguelikes that I'm interested in. Uh, but yeah, that's me. I'm Alfred. It's short for El Friedrich, if you're curious. Um, thank you all for coming. I hope you all have a good day.